Some scholars explain that the eccentricity of El Greco's style came from his congenital astigmatism. Others claim it's from the artificial light by which he preferred the work. He gained admiration and glory with his diligence and brilliant personality during life. But almost 400 years after his death, his paintings were labeled as vulgar and worthy of scorn, and the painter himself, freakishly and excessively arrogant. It was only in the 20th century that El Greco was acknowledged as one of the founders of the Spanish school. Spaniard at heart but Greek by birth, Domenico Seotokopoulos was born in Crete in 1541 into the family of a tax collector. At the time, Candia, his native town, was under the rule of the Republic of Venice. Due to this fact, a special spiritual climate was raised in Crete, the mixture of both European and Byzantine cultures. Domenico showed interest in art as a child, and his father's opulence and high position gave him an opportunity to study in the best art studio in the city. At the age of 20, Theotokopoulos obtained a certificate stating that henceforth he was a master of miniature and fresco. One of his earliest paintings, The Dormition of the Virgin, reflected the processes in cultural and social life in Crete of the second half of the 16th century, when the austere religious traditions of Byzantium combined with the Western art, which was always ready for experiments. The artist depicted a dove amongst the canonical orthodox, the Catholic symbol of the Holy Spirit. The youth's passion for the Italian art urged him to leave Crete. At that time, the 80-year-old Titian was considered to be the greatest artist of Venice. The exalted minds called him the Heavenly Chosen One. Domenico studied at Titian's art studio, where he mastered the technique of oil painting and the essential principles of perspective. Later on, he entered into the High Society of Venice and then of Rome. The well-known miniature painter, Giulio Clovio, who was the patron of the gifted Greek, introduced his young colleague to Cardinal Farnesia. After this introduction, Domenico's got plenty of orders. But one day, the haughty and opinionated Domenico's declared he was able to make better frescoes than Michelangelo's Last Judgment. His boast caused resentment on the part of Pontiff Gregory XIII and his colleagues. The 36-year-old painter had to leave Rome. He got an order to design the altar of the Santo Domingo Church in Toledo, the former Spanish capital, which still preserved the atmosphere of the special city. His canvases, the Holy Trinity, and the worship of the shepherds were acknowledged as masterpieces, and the author, who was called El Greco, which means the Greek, by the Spaniards, gained the reputation of the most gifted painter of the present. The artist found not only recognition, but also love in Toledo. The reason why he never married his beloved woman, a Spanish woman named Jerónima de las Cuevas, is still not known. Their only son, Jorge Manuel, became both an artist and an architect. El Greco's painting El Espolio, depicting Christ before crucifixion, is considered a masterpiece. However, this order gave the artist lots of troubles. The padres of the cathedral refused to pay the 900 ducats they promised, and that was a fantastic sum of money at the time. They claimed that some details of the painting did not correspond to the canonical treatise of the gospel. El Greco refused to make any changes in his painting, and after receiving one-third of what he was promised, he declared, I prefer poverty to non-freedom. El Greco had never become the court artist in Madrid. Because of his arrogant temperament, Philip II, who wasn't used to eccentricity and experiments, was not pleased with the innovative painting Martyrdom of St. Maurice. But in Toledo, El Greco was loved and valued as an artist. The foreigner was conferred the status of the resident. He started to learn Spanish and organized his own workshop. He designed local temples, which meant not only painting, but also sculptural and architectural tasks. El Greco enjoyed the confidence and friendship of Toledo's aristocracy, 
and the members of eminent families, as well as writers and scholars, posed for him willingly. They were drawn by the unique style of the artist, which he was called the strange painter. Features such as elongated figures, oblong faces, his rejection of hard and fast rules, and anatomical proportions were common. El Greco resorted to the help of his son and numerous apprentices to fill the orders in time. They also made the reductions of all the famous paintings by their artists in order to have models for rich customers at hand. The money he got for the work permitted El Greco to possess a luxurious mansion, and as his contemporaries asserted, he ran up to the point he had paid musicians to charm his ear with music while eating. According to other sources, he spent all the money on new books for his voluminous library. El Greco died at the age of 73 in 1614. Three centuries later, the French writer and director Jean Cocteau said, El Greco is a challenge. El Greco is the prayer. El Greco is the plunger who found the pearl.